Good morning folks. Just another quick little curiosity human interest clip. That uh, sandstone structure there is um, the monument to James Cook. Uh, it's only not very far from the landing place or supposed landing place which is uh, signified by that plinth there which has a plate on it and some writing facing away from us um, just up here for a monument to a very great man it's quite understated I think this just sits up here on this bedrock of local coastal sandstone it's got a low sandstone wall around it very basic masonry it's surrounded by these four little walls and uh, there you go that structure looks like there used to be something in the stone up there there's a couple of holes I actually hadn't noticed that before there you go but anyway it was um You got Captain Cook. Monument was erected in 1970, so oh sorry, 1870, so it's 100 years after he landed. Um, Honourable Thomas Holt, <laughs> yeah, Holt family. There's a bunch of miscreants if ever there was one. Of course, that's just my personal opinion. Pretty much all the uh, Holt family used to own. I guess the entire Cronulla Peninsula, including Cornell, and they said about raping it. Anyway, as I said, just my opinion. Uh, this is a 200th anniversary plaque, uh, and uh, to commemorate um, bicentenary. Old Lizzie was here, and uh, and her hubby, and the eldest daughter Anne, Princess Anne. That was in 1970. That was pretty cool. Got another plaque around here, which is just an extract from the journal. Get a little bit of that. I'm pretty lucky living here. It really should be made more of and treasured more this place. I'm sure if it was this is the landing place of the, the American forefathers or whatever they the whole place would be one in one gigantic memorial although they could have turned it into a theme park as well which wouldn't surprise me now just up here I'm going to show you now where that rock is and that plaque there used to stand a huge Norfolk pine a bit like one of these guys that are up here on the hill and um, I was living in Cronulla at the time and I remember um, what happened there was a there was a bicentenary, bicentenary in 1970 or thereabouts no I think it was Australia Day something like that anyway um, some vandals ring barked the tree that stood here Aracuaria cookie eye, that was the name, of, that was the species of tree. Uh, ring barked it, and ring barked it really badly. It turned out it was a group of um, indigenous people, whether they were from this area or not, I don't suppose it matters, but the tree was significant to them as it was to, uh, to the white Australians, I guess for completely different reasons anyway it was ring barked big time and I remember coming out here with my dad and they had peat moss huge section of peat moss like a bandage around the ring bark section all held on by wire and constantly watered in an effort to save the tree and uh, it died and in the interest of public safety they they cut it down and replaced it with that 
that rock I was just showing you. Now I don't really blame the, the Aboriginals for doing what they did. It was a significant protest. Um, the destruction of a, a very potent symbol. But uh, in the long run it was just an innocent, beautiful tree that they killed for their own reasons. But uh, significant as it was, it was a pretty stupid protest. Taking it out on that tree. Anyway, <clears throat> can't say I blame them. So that's Cook's Monument. It's a shame it's so near to you know so much industry and oil refinery and the pipeline over there and that sort of thing. As I said, if it was in America, this would be like a national park. Well, it still is a national park, but you know, I think it's more significant and deserves more recognition, I think. Anyway, I guess I'm pretty lucky to live in such a such a significant place and it's full of natural beauty as well. Cook's Monument. Southern Shore of Botany Bay, Kernel, New South Wales, Sutherland Shire, Australia. See ya.